here. I am live in my studio. It is President's Day, uh, February 20th. It's 11 o'clock Mountain Time. And today is going to be the demonstration of the ladybug quilt, the ladybug block. Okay, so this is what we're working on today. And I'm going to do a live demonstration um, starting at the very beginning for this ladybug block. So this is part of the quilt along that we are doing in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. So if you have not uh, joined Facebook or joined that group yet, I encourage you to do so because that's kind of where we will be talking more about it and providing tips and whatnot. Um, you can purchase this pattern if you have not already. It is now available as a download at collagequilter.com and Amelia will put the link for the download in the comments section. Um, also, it is available as a kit. So let's open up the kit and take a look at it and see what's there. And we will then get started. Okay. So here, when you order the kit from collagequilter.com, it's only 30 bucks. That includes the pattern as well as the fabric. So let me open this up and show you what is in it. So when you first get this, you will have... Um, all of the instructions and this template. Okay, so that template is something that we need right out of the chute. And I'm going to set it right there. Um, please read through all of the instructions. Um, if you're not familiar with my method, it will help you. So everything, even if you don't um, follow through watching this video, all of the instructions are in the pattern. Um, then we also have all of the fabric that you'll need for the project. So multiple pieces of red fabric, some white and um, gray black fabric for our little ladybug. So that's all in the kit. And the, um, the background fabric is as well. So we've got a little square of the background fabric in the kit also. So let's um, now let's just start from from the very first, uh, the very the very beginning. So what I will do is take my ladybug. Let me just I want to make sure that I flip on chat. OK, there. So I can see everybody that's uh, hopping on and where you're all from. I love it. Um, we have just real quick Kansas, Yuma, Arizona, Norway. Welcome, Joyce. Um, let's see. And Eileen just asked a quick question. She said, will this live session session stay on YouTube? Yes. So these live streaming videos will always be on my YouTube channel, the Collage Quilter YouTube channel, as well as on Facebook. So, um, Barbara just asked a great question. She said, will you have that background fabric available as yardage? Um, Barbara, we haven't thought about making it available as yardage right now. It's just available in the kits. Um, I guess we could make it available as yardage. We have a lot of it. It depends because we, we you still need it for USU. Yeah. Okay. So it depends. I've got a, an event that I need this um, for, but I think we have enough that we'll be able to make it available. So um, that's that. Let's see. I Should just enlarge this. Oh, no, this is the size. Okay, so that's the size. No need to enlarge it. So when you get the download or when you get the pattern, this is the size. It just is a darling little, um, a darling little ladybug. Let me show you. Same size. See that? Okay, so don't, no need to, um, to do anything with this. What you're going to do, though, as soon as you open your pattern is you will take a piece of parchment paper, slide your template underneath and trace it onto the parchment paper. So I did mine on my light box over there. So I got all the little details. You can also hang it in a window, a light window. Um, and then once I've got that all traced, I like to have the uh, ladybug, the gray tone right next to it so that I can see it really well. So I'm just going to pin this um, next door. Okay, so just real quick, this is a piece of foam core that's been covered with felt, and this is going to be my work surface. Let me just also mention the other kind of my setup here. Um, oh, I want to, okay. Um, we'll change camera angles in just a minute, but 
Um, so I've got, this is the work surface. It's just a small uh, folding table. Um, first, I've got my wand iron ready to go. It's sitting on my, uh, my, my silicone pad. I've got my scissors, my tweezers, and I've got my light steam seam. Oh, by the way, this is included in the kit. So for $30, you get all that fabric, the pattern, and a pack of steam seam. And this is about is all, all you're going to need. Um, and then I, I did also want to mention my book. If you have not made a collage quilt before or collage, textile collage using my method, um, you'll hear me talk a little bit about uh, value and temperature and contrast. Um, those are my kind of caveat, my, my key, uh, my key concepts about creating a collage quilt. So if you are interested in learning more, uh, this is the book to get because it goes through all of um, my uh, color theory, as well as products and why I use certain products. And then it has some, uh, some patterns in it as well. So just, just a little, if you don't have that, I'd recommend it if you're interested in doing more collage. Okay. So now what I've done is I, you know, if I pull my fabric out, I want you guys to prepare your, um, fabric with the steam seam. Okay. So you can cut these pieces even smaller. They don't need to be very big. It's a generous amount of fabric. You might be able to make two or three different ladybugs, um, maybe even four, because there's enough fabric here. So prepare your fabric with steam seam. So what I mean by that is I will take my piece of fabric that's in the kit and I will uh, apply it to the, to the steam seam and then leave that paper on the back. So this fabric has been prepared with steam seam and now it's ready to use. So I've got a bunch of fabric here. Some of it um, might be different than what you have, but um, not to worry. The fabric that I've selected for the kits might vary a little bit, but I've selected all of them so that you have a really good spectrum of light to dark in red and kind of pinks. So I've just pulled out the same, pretty a lot of the same fabrics, and you can even add more fabric if you want. There's no limit on the amount of fabric that you can that you can use when you're making a collage. Um, in fact, the more the better. The more interesting it will be if you incorporate more fabric. And I always recommend incorporating fabric that has some interesting stuff going on. That's what makes my collages look really interesting. So let's just take a look at this ladybug. See all those pieces of fabric that have little pops of color and a little bit of variation the combination of putting all of those together makes it look really interesting and that's kind of the key with the type of collage that i do i like to mix a lot of different fabrics so okay let's dig in then so you will have traced your ladybug and prepared your steam seam prepared your fabric with steam seam not the blue though leave that so you will have prepared all of the rest of these you can cut them smaller to make good use of your steam seam. Um, and then what we're going to do, I will change the camera now and just walk through the next step, okay? So let me take just a second and change the camera angle here. Is the parchment paper bleached or not? Oh, someone asked, is the parchment paper bleached or not? Um, my parchment paper is bleached, but I don't think it matters. So. The purpose of the parchment paper is um, to provide a non-stick heat resistant surface. So it doesn't matter if it's white or that non-bleached kind of linen color. I think either one would work. It is very helpful to have it be um, also somewhat translucent so that you can trace onto the parchment paper. Okay, let me change my camera here. Okay. Any hints to get the fusible on without bubbles? Somebody just asked any hint to get the fusible on without bubbles. So the first, the first hint I would give you is make sure that your fabric has been well pressed. Okay. So press your fabric really flat and then um, open up your steam seam and lay it down and just 
spread it out. If there are bubbles in your steam seam or whatever, start from the center of that piece of fabric and press it out and then cut around it and then press it on the back. Okay. So um, that's what it's also handy to have a small little mini iron here, or you can do it at your, you know, your large iron, but Regardless, once you get the fabric, the steam -a seam on the back of the fabric, then I flip the fabric over so that I'm pressing on the, I press on this side. I just do a hot iron on that, and then that ensures that the fabric has the steam -a seam stuck to it. Okay. All right. So I've got this other camera. Let me just make sure um, that it is, I'm going to move my stuff around a little bit. Okay. I kind of figured out that I like having, I like doing it right here so that I can still see you. And there we go. That should work just fine. Let's add a little bit more light in here. Okay. All right, we are ready to turn on the other camera now. Okay, let me add this camera. Okay, there. So now you can see, let's see if I need my glasses today. No, oh, I think I'm okay. I think I can see okay. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is create a spectrum with my fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna go from light to dark and this is really easy. I'm gonna just do this right on top here. Now, um, the other thing, it is, it is helpful to have the pattern cover sitting right next to you as well. So if you want to do that so that you can kind of look at that as well, I like to have as many references as possible. So I'm going to just kind of create a spectrum of fabric and I probably pulled out more than I need. So I really don't need all this, but yeah, I think I'll just pull some of it out. Um, so this is the very first step. Whenever I um, begin on a collage, and you can do this with the fabric that's enclosed in the kit. So as I, I'm just going to lay it out after it's been prepared with the steam seam, and then put it into kind of groupings, right? So I've got kind of my lighter, my mid, and then my um, my going towards the dark. Amelia, is there a way to cool that color a little bit on the camera? It seems really yeah. warm. Let's just change. I'll tell you when I can. That one might not have a temperature. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's better. I think that's more realistic color more true color do you want on that though on uh yeah let's kind of bend it down just a little bit if you can, I think, I can. I think that looks good does that work yeah yeah that's good thank you okay so you get the you get the gist um, that I'm sorting kind of my fabric. Um, now, if you are selecting fabric on your own, um, I would aim to get, oh, 10 to 14 pieces of red. Um, you may not use all of it, so you could do, you could do less, but the more you can try and incorporate the better. So here we have a little bit of a spectrum and I've got my ultra, my ultra lights. Okay. Over into my my mid-tones. Now the pinks that I've incorporated into this are um, rather warm pinks. They're not cool pinks. And now, so this is kind of my spectrum. Okay. That's the fabric that I'm going to be working with. And that spectrum is what's going to help me get a little, create a ladybug that is dimensional. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside just a little bit so that I can now dig in on getting started. So you can see um, this looks rather complex, but I want you to keep in mind that the 
gray tone guide. They're, it's just a guide. We don't need to be really specific following it very specifically, okay? Um, it will turn out really great even if you don't follow it precisely. All right, so now I'm just going to dig in, and I'm starting on this edge down here where it's kind of darker. Um, so I've got my pen here. I'm going to score the paper. So in the instructions, you'll see score the paper. This is what I mean. Score the paper and lay it down. Now these first few pieces, make sure you have a, a trash can nearby. And these first few pieces might not, um, might not stick to the parchment paper very well. So I'm going to press it down to the parchment paper to ensure that it sticks to the parchment paper. See how you can kind of adjust the shape around. It doesn't really matter. I'm not super particular about the shape that I cut. And I want my pieces to overlap. And I'm pressing only these first few pieces, but I'm being careful not to press them to each other. I'm pressing them only to the parchment paper. And that way I can still move everything, move anything that I might need to. So now I'm looking at the next value set, which is kind of this area here. And I'm moving in down the spectrum a little bit. So Amelia is going to moderate comments. Now these subsequent pieces are going to start using that temporary adhesive. They're going to stick to the pieces that are next to them. But again, I'm just going to press that just a little bit to the parchment paper just to ensure that it um, sticks there good. Can you also have to turn on subtitles? It, somebody just asked, is it possible to turn on subtitles? Um, let me see if we can turn on. It might not work while you're live. It yeah. Might only work afterwards. It might not work while I'm live. Let me see here. I'm just looking to see. I am not sure how to add subtitles. We will look into that. That's a great idea. I know on YouTube we can do a setting where there are subtitles. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know, Amelia and I, I've mentioned, we are trying to up our game with the streaming and video. Cause I know it's really important for people to feel like they can learn from me. And, um, this little piece just look, that just didn't work. So let's do that again. Um, anyway, we are learning, learning, learning as much as we can with this uh, streaming equipment. It's rather complex. So I now don't want to lose where I'm going to put that. Um, there's a little black dot that needs to go right there. So I'm going to do that right now before I forget about it. And these dots can be rather random. So I'm going to put that right there. Oops. And one more little slice of fabric right there on his the round just to kind of round him out. Amelia, you're moderating comments, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is where these tweezers come in. They're super helpful. I can lift these pieces up and layer it the way I, I, I think is best. So do you preview pieces as you work your way through the design versus adhering a piece permanently? Somebody asked, do I preview pieces um, before committing it? 
sometimes I do. I, I, I do not so much with the fabric, but really with the shape. Sometimes I'll cut kind of a shape. And if the shape isn't right, um, like right here, I need to probably obviously round that out for this little ladybug. And I don't preview color so much as I do um, shape because the color I kind of already established uh, based on the gray tone and the fabric selection. So once I have my fabric selected, that's that's pretty pretty much it. Do you always work dark colors first and then light? Somebody asked, do I always work dark colors first and then go light? Um, it's a good way to start. I don't always do that, but it's a good way to start because then it establishes the darkest end of the spectrum. And I know everything else has to be lighter. So everything else going forward has to um, have enough contrast. Okay. So there are on the, on this, there's a little highlight just kind of suggesting that it's rounded. Um, you may or may not want to, to emphasize that. Let's just take a look at what happens if I do, if I follow the design. Did you face your love always in cardinal? And if so, how did you hang them? Okay, great question. So somebody said, did you face your love always and cardinal pattern? Yeah, both of them, right? Haven't both? Of, yeah, both of them have a facing on them. Um, facing is a way of finishing a quilt that doesn't have a binding on it. Okay, how's that looking? Yeah, I think that's looking great. Now we're gonna don't let me forget. I've got that other little that other little dot there. So let's add that now. Um, to do a facing, uh, I think both of the patterns contain that those instructions, the love always and the cardinal. If they don't, um, I know my take flight book has a in step-by-step -step photo instructions of doing facing on a quilt. Okay, so now I'm gonna move up to the next, the next value. Um, this steam seam, so I prepared, some of these pieces have been prepared with steam seam recently. Some of them have been hanging around in my scrap bin and it's kind of interesting. I can kind of feel some of them, some have really, really sticky steam seam and some of them, the steam seam is just acting a little weird. It's interesting. Steam seam can be a rather finicky product. Um, but I find that adding a little bit of heat to it is will reactivate it. So I don't worry too much if it's if I have some pieces that are a little weird. What is the name of the black fabric with that touch of blue on it? This is included in the kit, I think. Yeah, this is included in the kit, and this is a K facet uh, millifor um, black in black. So it's a really, really great piece of fabric. So um, you will see the fabric that I like to use in my collage is what I put in the kits and in my fabric bundles. I think we also have that this particular pattern in uh our black and gray bundle right amelia don't think so. i'm pretty i'm pretty sure we do
So some of these um, have little uh, threads hanging off of them, and I like to make sure that I trim those little threads. Now we've got another dot. We don't want to lose that dot, so I'm going to make sure that I put the dot down now. Just so we know it's going right there. And this one, I think I'm going to be, I'm going to use a darker, darker. So these kind of blend in a little bit, don't they? Um, I'm going to use a darker black. And I believe you also have a cup, a little bit of a variety in the fabric, in the black. Yes, you do. There's So the kits have a good variety of black. Well, a good variety, two or three. I'm just going to lay that right on top there. And now you can see I'm not like that is not a perfect circle, right? Well, the thing about ladybugs, they actually don't have perfect perfect little dots on their backs either. Um, and furthermore, this doesn't, it's not a precise uh, match to the drawing. That's okay. Don't you love it that I'm giving you some freedom to make mistakes and go outside the lines? We don't need to worry about everything being perfect in our collages. But you can kind of see the, um, the, you can see what's happening already that those dark pieces against the pieces as we go lighter, that's really, it's becoming very dimensional, isn't it? See how I use those tweezers? They are so, so helpful. And we just restocked our tweezers, didn't we, Amelia? So if you're looking for those tweezers, they are created by a sweet friend of mine um, Heidi Profity, she's also a, a quilter. She is a mosaic quilter, super, super talented, and just the, the nicest person. And um, we've just kind of become friends on Facebook and running it, you know, seeing each other at the quilt shows and whatnot. And so we buy these tweezers from her. Okay, so now I've pretty much, oh, let, let's add one more piece up there. And then I think we will can we'll go to the next, the lighter, the lightest sort of pink up here. Okay, that's where that's where we're heading. You'll also notice that I tend to use like if I pull, if I'm using one piece of fabric, you'll see it um, in the collage um, several times. Um, okay, so now let's move up and get the the lighter going on. And these these right here are some dots. You can see they're they're it's a two tone dot. Um, you may or may not want to worry about the two-tone dot. Again, the idea is just to kind of make this ladybug dimensional. So a round sphere, um, as it goes around, it picks up on those on those on the outside edges. A sphere would pick up uh, reflected light, and so that's why that little shadow is there, or that little highlight there. So um, that's that's the reason. But if you don't want to if you don't want to mess with it because it's too small, don't worry about it. Okay. So now I'm going to move into these lighter kind of pink, warm pink colors. And I just, you know, I'm I'm kind of rotating it around, making sure I. I'm happy with the way it's going to fit in there. I think that's going to go like right there. 
And let's press that just a little bit. It's a big piece. Okay. Now um, I'm going to use the same fabric. I really like this. So you'll find, I think a, a lot of them have this piece. Um, some of you will have pieces that are real. It's again, very, very close. Um, you might not have the exact one. Okay, Amelia, how, how are we on questions? Don't hesitate to type your questions, folks. Okay, now let's get these, these dots in here and then the outer edge of the ladybug, right? So let's start with that, I think. A blue ladybug would look good. Somebody asked if I think a blue ladybug would look good. Um, I personally would stick with the red ladybug because that's the kind that I see that I'm familiar with in my area. I don't know if blue ladybugs exist. They might. I don't know. But um, for me, a, a ladybug is red, red with black spots. So. You could certainly try it and see what you think. Okay. Uh, we are, one more piece right here. That's looking good. It's just. Goodbye, love. Have a great day. My daughter is off to her job. Bye, love. Love you. Sorry. Sorry, folks. I don't need to yell, <laughs> need to yell into that. <laughs> um, okay. So now let's not lose those uh, dots there, okay? And we've also got a little highlight right here that I think would be nice to remember. That little highlight, that little highlight. I can still see it right there. So I'm gonna trim this just a tad. And somebody just asked, where do we buy the kit? Um, you can buy the kit on only on my website, collagequilter.com. And again, the kit is available that contains all the fabric, the steam seam and the pattern, or you can uh, purchase the download if the download is easier for you. Do you use solid fabrics very much? Somebody asked if I use solid fabrics very much. I actually don't use solid fabrics. So very, very rarely, if I have it in my stash and I really like the color or something, I will incorporate a solid color. But I have learned that they're boring. They're boring in a collage. That's, I, I, I yeah, they're just boring. Um, they're not interesting and they tend to uh, stick out too much. I want fabric to, you know, blend together. Um, um, I want it to be an interesting looking collage and black or solid just tends to be quite boring. Do you use colored pencil to add small highlights? Somebody, oh, that that is actually a great question. Somebody just asked, do I ever use small or ink tense pencils? Sure. Uh, so, colored pencil. Though. Okay. Do I ever use colored pencil or ink tense pencils to add highlights? Um, no, not to add highlights. Uh, that, generally speaking, um, you can only layer color and and darkness on with the ink tint. So I will use them for shadows, but not for highlights. And the um, 
they're a little bit like watercolor that way. Like you can't add, um, you can't add white watercolor paint on top of something to create a highlight. You have to leave, if you want a, a white highlight on a bug like this, you would have to leave the white paper. You don't put any paint there. So um, highlights, I can only add highlights with fabric because they're opaque. So speaking of highlights, let's add our add some little highlights in here now. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so we've got these colors here. Oh, we've done those. That's these. Now I'm gonna start with some highlight area. Will right you cut under the camera? Yep. People like to see how you cut. Okay. Let me just. So this is kind of a hodgepodge mishmash piece. You can see how I was had run out of steam seam. So I'm gonna make sure I. Don't cut on that seam. Do you use blenders that read as solid from a distance? Um, so somebody asked, do I use do I use blenders that read as a solid? Um, yes, I, I like blenders, but um, I always, always don't, I always use additional fabric as well that has pops of color. So if I were to, let me, let me, I'll do a little demonstration for you here in just a second. Um, let's just put that down here, put that on top. Um, let me, let me finish this one. And I'm going to do a little demonstration about the importance of incorporating interesting fabric. One more quick question before okay. you do that. Do you find that you use batiks more than just regular cotton pulp fabrics? So that's an interesting question. Somebody asked, do I use batik fabrics more than I use printed fabric? Well, um, maybe you can, maybe that question can be answered by looking at the fabric that I've used. So let's look at the fabric that I've got here for a second. Let me pull this all together. Okay. So in answer to that question, do I use batiks more than printed fabric? No, I'd say I actually use printed fabric more than I use batiks. Um, now the other, um, I, I like the look of both of them together, but I do not like batiks on their own. I would do printed fabric on its own without any, without using any batiks, but I will never just use batiks. Um, again, too boring. So what I want to demonstrate here is if I wanted to, if I was trying to be really super safe and buy fabric that's only red or um, only the color that I'm looking for, what happens, watch what happens if I pull out the fabric that has some variation of color. Like all of a sudden it just becomes so much more boring. Let me do that again in this other camera, okay? So... Here we go. I'm gonna create kind of a, a nice visual for you. See all those beautiful colors? What if I pulled out anything that had different colors? All of a sudden, just removing one piece makes it boring, right? So um, always use always use interesting fabric. Okay, let's get back to this. Let's see where we are. Um, almost, oh, I, I need to be able to see. I love having the reference right here. So I'm going to put one more piece right in here. How many layers of fabric are safe to place that will still allow you to quilt later? And how much overlap is there? Okay, so a couple questions. How much overlap is there? So I overlap things by... Um, oh, about an eighth of an inch to a half inch. That's how much overlap there is. Um, I try not to put too many overlapping pieces um, because I, I, I really only want two, maybe three pieces of fabric um, overlapping each other. I don't want to build it so that it goes... I think that made the, did you just make it cooler? No, I made, I turned it down because it was washing it out. Yeah, okay. 
but it's looking it's looking pretty good. I hope that I hope you can see that pretty good. Okay. Um, so back to the question. Yeah, I, I try not to, I don't layer things on top of each other much. We will with the highlights. Um, so we'll have a few layers there, but otherwise I try to just, we're just covering um, the, the parchment paper. Okay, uh, let's see here. Does it make a difference more if little your piece right too big or too small? Is there a size that's preferred? Um, so somebody just asked about the size of the cuts. So you can kind of see, this is a smaller project, right? So my pieces are smaller. Um, if this were bigger, um, my pieces would be bigger. But you can kind of see, you can kind of get a scale, the, the, the idea of how big my pieces are. Okay, so now we're going to do kind of a little, um, we're going to work on that little highlight. So first of all, he has a little bit of black there and a little bit of gray and then some highlight down here. Kind of an interesting section of this little creature. Can they purchase the ladybug fabric without the pattern? Um, no. So the question was asked, can, they, can you purchase the ladybug pattern? Now, real quick, I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, this is an this is a, a point where I realized that's the wrong piece of fabric, right? Because it's the same value as what's next to it. And what I need is a piece that's just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to just move that and select something that's a little lighter. I think this one will work. Um, so the question was, can you buy just the fabric without the pattern? Unfortunately, no. We're only selling the selling as a kit. On the, the main, the bulk of the price is of the of the kit is for the seam seam the fabric. So yeah, the bulk of the buying the fabric anyways. Right, right. The bulk of the price is really the steam seam and the fabric and the labor to cut the fabric. Okay, now let's do a little dark right there. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's another piece. I think I'll use this. I haven't, haven't pulled this in yet. What happens if you find that some of the pieces don't stick well? Oh, if some of the pieces don't stick well, um, just Put, just tap them with your iron and and they'll stick again even if you even if you attach it to the other pieces that's okay but that's ultimately what we're going to be doing is um, making these pieces stick to each other and and that's part of the reason like it's really handy to work on a flat surface doing parchment pressing because they don't stick sometimes and as long as they're laying flat, they're going to sit on each other, even if they're not stuck, right? Um, the one thing, ah, oh, here we go. Okay, so here's a good light color. Can you use a low volume fabric for highlights? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So somebody asked, can you use a low volume fabric for highlights. So that's what I've got going on right now. This is, it, it probably reads white, but it actually has, um, it has a pattern in it. I think it's the one, I think this is included. Yeah, this is included in your kit. Okay. Now there are a few little teeny, teeny holes right there. And if I want to cover that up, I'm going to maybe just use a little bit of, uh, well, we can use pink or gray just to kind of fill that in. Now this is, this is, these are tiny little fill in pieces. This is really as small as I will go. And I'm, let's see, tweezers, there they are. I'm just going to stick it right there. Okay. 
All right, now we are pretty much done with the body of the ladybug. So let's do up here. And I can see um, there's a little bit of variation in his head. And this is really dark. And then we've got some highlights here and here. Okay, so we'll just select our, our darkest black to go right there. Using cotton fabric is probably preferred. However, what other types of fabric work well for collage quilting? And are there any fabrics that would not work? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, other types of fabrics that you can use in a collage. So I'm all for experimenting and discovering um, other types of fabrics that might work well in your collage. So I love that idea. I love the idea of using wool or um, silk or, or whatever, you know, the, to make it kind of interesting. But the caveat is that you have to know how it's going to react to steam because we have to be able to, at least with this method, this parchment pressing method, you've got to be able to steam it. And um, so if organza or silk or something is going to get ruined when you steam it, well, then you can't use it. Um, you could use it in a different method, but not with this parchment pressing method. Does that make sense? Is that lightest highlight actually pink? It looks white on the screen. It is white. It's kind of a light gray. Light, light, light gray. So you can use either a light pink or a light gray. And I can pull that out and just, we can, we can audition a different different um, different fabric and see what that would look like, okay? So we'll do that in a minute as soon as I'm finished here. Do you always cut fabric freehand? Do you ever trace some more complicated parts of the pattern? Okay, great question. Um, so somebody said, do you always cut things freehand or do you sometimes trace things? Well, I'm gonna demonstrate. Yes, I do trace things on occasion. Um, I, I wouldn't, like, if I wanted to get that little leg right there perfectly, um, let's look at it right here, and I'll show you how I do a tracing. So I select the fabric that I'm going to use for it. So this little area right here, let's say I'm going to use this fabric. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to separate the fabric from the paper and pencil. Let me find a pencil. Now you need to get me a sharp pencil somewhere. I had one. Can you use that? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I'm I've peeled back the I've peeled back the uh, fabric and on the inside of that parchment paper, I'm going to I'm actually gonna make it a little bigger so that it can overlap. So on something like this, where you want to have it be more precise, then I can fold that back and I can see the, you see the little template that that's created right there. So now I can just follow that template that I've created. And I probably should press this together again so that it doesn't fall apart, but I think I've got it. Actually, I'm going to. So I'm just going to press that so that the template doesn't separate from the fabric. So there's his little, there's his little leg. Now I can just peel that off and slide that in right there. And so that's, that's an example of a little sass tracing. Now, could I eyeball that? Yeah, I, I can eyeball. So for something like this, I can eyeball that. And the reason is because their legs move and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? So even if it's not exact, 
to the drawing, that will still work. Nobody will ever know that his leg was actually drawn differently. Okay, we're almost done with this little guy. Let's do his little head. Okay, I kind of eyeballed that and I made it a little too small, but you know what? That's okay. I'm just going to leave it as is. Questions. I, I, mean, I think a question just came in. Oops, where'd my tweezers go? Could you possibly use a piece of yarn for the leg and just glue it onto your project? Somebody asked if they could use a piece of yarn. You know what? I think I've got a piece of extra fabric under here. Look at that. I'm going to take that out. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, somebody asked if you could use a piece of yarn for his legs. Sure. Um, I would probably do that when I, I the, the other way to do this would be um, if you wanted to embroider his little legs and antenna, that would be another way that you could add legs. I see that sometimes you use the mini iron and sometimes not. Is it possible to over iron at this stage? Um, so somebody just asked if it's possible to over iron at this stage. Um, well, the advantage with using the iron is that it makes pieces stick, right? Um, that the disadvantage is that it makes pieces stick. Um, I don't want to have them stick to each other too much right now because I want to have flexibility to make changes if I want to. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you that in just a second. Let's do a little piece down here. Um, I get someone said I get easily overwhelmed when choosing projects or when choosing fabrics for a project. As a beginner collager, should I limit the number of fabrics I pull from my stash, like 15 instead of 30? Oh, interesting question. Okay, so somebody said they get overwhelmed when, when choosing preparing, fabric. when choosing fabric, um, when preparing. I think, I think you're actually making it easier on yourself to pull more, as long as you can sort that fabric and organize it into groups. So that's kind of the key. It doesn't matter how big your groups are. Um, you do need to kind of narrow down your groups of fabric to kind of work with each other like, like I did here, right? Like we chose fabric that was going to be for the dark and the, the next value and then this value and this value. So we had four, um, we had four value sets that we were working with. And it doesn't matter how many pieces I choose to put in each value set, as long as they look cohesive, um, as long as I can tell that there's a value distinction between those. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess there might be a point where you'd be like, you don't need to pull 75 pieces of fabric for a tiny little project like this. Um, so yeah, that use your judgment. Um, okay, we are real close to being finished here. How do you, what do you use to clean your little iron and what do you do if your needles get gummy? Okay, so as far as quilting, we're going to talk about quilting next week. Uh, or is it next week? I don't know. We're, so this, okay, we next will, week is composition, right? yeah, I think we're going to work on composition, but at some point very soon, we're going to do, um, uh, lesson on the quilting part. So I'll dive into more of the quilting questions 
then. Um, and then let's see, I'm looking for one other piece of fabric here. Where'd it go? What was the other question? What do you use to clean your little wand iron? Oh, huh. what do I use to clean my little wand iron? I haven't cleaned my little wand iron, but I understand that using dryer sheets is the key. So for whatever reason, dryer sheets will get the gunk if there's any, you know, adhesive on your, um, on your iron. Where did my light piece of fabric go? I really need that. What happened to it? Okay, that's really weird. I had a light piece of fabric sitting here. Oh, there it is. Found it. Don't worry, guys. Got it. This one. What do we do when we finish placing fabric on the parchment paper? Well, hang tight and I'll show you. When you're done placing fabric, or, okay, first things first, there are a few pieces that I might want to change out. I'm like, yeah, that's, I don't know. I think I might want to lift that up and set that aside and maybe go a little, a little different there. So I'm going to use this there. Or at least make that transition from the really dark to the really light. I'm going to soften that transition a little bit. So I'm going to go like this. Um, Um, understanding when to create dramatic contrast and subtle contrast is, is I think very important and it's something, um, I think as beginner collage quilt artists, sometimes we can easily create dramatic contrast, but those, the subtle contrast is, um, it's a little, it's more nuanced and requires a little more sophisticated understanding of how to create contrast. So um, that is, I'm going to just press that down because I need it to stick there. So I am pressing these pieces to each other. And so when I talk about a uh, transition, um, that, do you see how that transitioned into the highlight area? rather than um, a dramatic contrast, it was a much more subtle contrast to the highlight. And whenever you're doing a highlight, sometimes you kind of need to think about that, that the transition probably needs to be soft. So that's why you'll see on this little area right here, this is kind of the transition piece between the dark and the white. Okay, now I think we're pretty much done. We're just gonna add his little, um, his little legs. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is at this point, if there's something in here that really bothers me that I'm not happy with, I can still use my tweezers and lift it up and pull it out, okay? So I can still pull everything apart. In fact, this piece might be, I think I might wanna do that. I think I might wanna go, um, Actually, I see this little piece right here, and I want to do this. And then I want to go really light pink instead of kind of the gray that I had there. So that is the reason that it's kind of nice not to press things not to press the pieces to each other in case there are any changes that you want to make after you're finished with it. Okay, there we go. Now let's do his little legs, okay? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna freehand his legs and his antenna. I think I can, I think I can do it. Give it a try here. So we'll use that one. Put 
There's one, two, we need some more over here. So, um, let's see here. There's another one. I'm going to just lift that up, tuck it right there. That one doesn't want to stay in place, so I'm going to make sure that it stays there. And just a few more little... Few more little legs. Last leg, and then we'll do his antenna. Okay, almost done. Amelia just ran downstairs for a second, so she'll be right back if you have questions so I can look at them. Okay. He is looking so cute, isn't he? Now, antenna. You can be a little whimsical if you want and choose some fun fabric or I'm just going to stick with the black because I'm because it's right in front of me. Let's cut that just a little bit. And final piece coming up right here. There, I think he's finished. Ta -da. Okay, so the things that I I hope that you've learned with this are um, it's okay to uh, to ignore the lines a little bit. Um, now I'm going to take my wand iron, and I'm pretty happy with that. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah. Amelia, do you like him? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, there's another ladybug for you, folks. Okay, so now what you're going to do is leave your little ladybug, and you're going to press him to the parchment paper. The dry iron. With a dry iron. No steam at this point. And then next week, we're going to talk about uh, peeling him away from the parchment paper and putting him on the background fabric and adding some um, fussy cut elements to create a beautiful little composition. So I think that's next week. And, and the following week is quilting. The following week we will be doing a demonstration about quilting. So we'll talk all about thread and needles and, um, and I'll demonstrate how I do my quilting. And I'm not a great quilter, but I like to think of doodle stitching. So if I can think of it like I'm doodling with my thread, then I can do it okay. The following week is about creating a pillow. Okay, and then <coughs> the final week of this little quilt along will be um, creating a pillow. So we have a few more weeks to go. I'm super excited to 
move forward with you. If you will please uh, post your progress. And if you have questions, uh, the Collage Quilter Academy is a great place to pose your questions as we move along. And then um, I will just see you here again next week, same time, 11 o'clock um, a.m. Mountain Time in my studio life. Anything else, Amelia? I think that covers it. Okay. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day and a great week and enjoy your President's Day holiday.